Sarah Pepper. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so just a quick few questions for you. What kind of um, music were you looking for? What instructions did you give Alex? Uh, well, we are the third year oh, in the studio directing the play, and I yeah. had a look at kind of comms lab, and we were talking about what kinds of things we wanted. And the instructions that we gave Alex were essentially we want pieces of music that can be repeated as motifs. So, for example, in the funny comical tales, we wanted a tune that we could just strike up to mm -hmm. make the audience aware that it was going to be a comic tale. Uh, so we gave him the instruction that we wanted to be quite romantic that we do for the Malik's Tale and that could then be reprised later when we had romantic scenes. We wanted something quite funny and jovial, upbeat for the, um, the Fabio tales, the comical stories and we wanted something a bit more serious, more ecclesiastical perhaps in feel for things like the Palmer's Tale. I suppose officially I'm just there to, to write the music, I'm kind of the sort of creative source of the music itself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is, I'm sort of surrounded by people that are constantly giving me inspiration and working with so actual it's musicians. Nice teamwork it's, as well. Yeah, I mean, it's never, you know, no man is neither, like they say, like it's, we wanted a rhythm section, so the borrowing was a good choice, you know, Celtic music obviously going back to that period. And uh, then originally wanted to get hold of a lute that I could play, um, but uh, we ended up getting a psaltery instead. And uh, yeah, sort of a nice sort of medieval lap part. Uh, and what's your personal favourite piece? Apart from I have a gentle cock, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Which, as you've as you pointed out, um, when we've been filming other bits of this, I tend to sway when I'm playing quite yes dramatically <laughs> on my heart. But um, I think Awaken, and I, I love it because it's the solo heart piece that introduces and then concludes the, the Canterbury Tales. Mm -hmm. But I love it for several reasons. I love it for the fact that the minute before I opened it, so before I'd seen the music or heard the music, the title just leapt out of me. Awaken. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to give Alex a really big kiss because <laughs> he completely got Did what he that piece was right. as well? He, he entitled oh, it himself wow. and he spelt it in uh, Middle English. Oh, so, so it's already. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, he just, when I saw that, he just I just thought, oh, yes, this is going to be great. I'm just there to kind of start the process off and have the kind of vision for the end but you know it's, it's great, it's great just working with the rails so, I mean even the actors the actors are going to be singing these parts so they yeah, bring their own true. interpretation to it and, yeah you know so when you have the final product which we're hopefully going to record it all it's yeah. kind of a product of everyone really well, I didn't really I didn't really choose the instruments so much as the instruments chose me it was kind of <laughs> what we had uh, what we had available but I probably you know definitely would have been on the list anyway um I think we kind of had wanted to have sort of flute instrument that's sort of very lyrical and there's a lot of kind of wood, typical woodwinds in medieval music and having the harp was kind of a no-brainer because you know Sarah's a good player and you know you want to take advantage of resources like that when, when you Willem, the Medieval music is a different study altogether, like it's all based around you know before the days of standardised standardized music being written down and Sometimes they would just draw the shape of the melody and things like that. So wow. it's a different it's a different musical period, and that kind of made it difficult to make it truly authentic without right. you know, sitting down and really studying it for a long period of time. I mean, it's always great to just play with other musicians. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't really matter about level. It's just coming together and having a bit of a jam. And <laughs> when it's medieval music, it's just a bit different, you know. Yeah. And and, uh, and just learning about medieval music as well. I've listened to loads of sort of traditional music and folk music, and you know. And, Kind of took a lot of inspiration from that and just ended up wanting to get into a room with people and play around with that sort of music and that's what we've done and it's, it's been great. Improvising and seeing what ideas stuck and recording little bits and you know just playing them over and over and then seeing what works and gluing it all together into a final composition. Great, and how are you feeling about it so far? Uh, well having heard it uh, in a room live with musicians I'm definitely a lot more confident now. So, because before I just kind of had the little mock-ups and the scores and you're looking at it and you, you know, pictures don't lie but I don't listen to pictures, you know, I, I listen to music and when it's not kind of there in the room it's hard to really gauge if it works. We've already been open the files because he'd completely got what we were trying to do with it. How we were trying to create this sense of the, the prologue is all about spring awakening, you know, things coming to life. Being uncertain is kind of part of the fun I guess. If you're always certain about it then it's just it's no fun. There's never any sense of accomplishment if you're just like, yeah, we've done that, it's easy. Yeah, sure. I just, I just think it's brilliant. The man's a musical genius. <laughs>